as boy Terry Collins has fallen in love with his left fielder. And pitching for the Toronto Blue Jays this evening is Drew Hutchinson. In 13 starts, he's 5 and 1. That's a little misleading because he's gotten almost 7.2 runs per game. But he is very good in the Rogers Center here. His ERA is under 3. And we'll take a look at the Blue Jay Big D, brought to you by Coors Light, as always. Kevin Pillar in center field. He had the big base running blunder in yesterday's ball game late in that eighth inning that cost the uh, could have probably cost the ball game. The infield, of course, Jose Reyes, Danny Valencia getting a start at third. Donaldson, uh, Josh Donaldson is, is the DH, and of course Russell Martin's been a splendid addition to this ball club uh, coming over from Pittsburgh in the offseason. You know, Keith, one of the things we talked about was the AstroTurf. We didn't talk about how the ball jumps out of here. That should help Curtis Granderson. You see. Curtis leading off for the Mets this evening. Those are his numbers so far. Just a beautiful day in Toronto today. The roof is open. One of the great North American cities. And the first pitch lifted to right field and deep. But it looks like center fielder Kevin Pillar will have a play. One out here for the Blue Jays. Just got under it enough there. Ron. Curtis uh, on the bat better just hasn't really put in a consistent hot streak but here's a guy right here coming up that has been red hot and getting on base and swinging a hot bat. We showed it in the T-Mobile game changer Lagares with 22 hits this month. It's almost like he's gotten not 100 percent but close to 100 percent from that injury he had under his armpit. First pitch a ball here to Lagares. Hutchinson is a pitcher will throw fastball two seamer and four seamer. A little, it's a slider. He calls it a slider. It's more like a curveball. His changeup is his third pitch. He doesn't use it very often. Evens account with a swing from the Garris, one and one. Hutchinson from Lakeland, Florida. Just see Lucas Duda on deck for the Mets. He's gotten red hot lately, too. Lakeland's the spring home of the Tigers for ages. That ball up to Lagaris. Count in his favor, two and one. Sean Barber, young umpire behind the plate tonight. When they talk about Hutchinson, they say a couple of things, Keith. He's like mechanical Mike. He's totally into his mechanics, and if everything isn't right, he tends to leave the ball up in the strike zone, which shouldn't fare very well here at this ballpark. Good breaking ball there to get the count to three and two. Not a strike, and that's something that that's a tough one to lay off, but that is something that Juan has been doing lately. Back up the middle. Diving stop, but no play for Reyes at first base as Lagares gets himself an infield hit. Juan's base hits have been on the ground and up the middle and to right center field. And there's another one right there. So some of the things you've seen in spring training from Lagares, the guy that takes the Hand off the bat. The pitcher tries to catch it with his right hand. Luckily, he did nice range by Reyes, but no chance for the speed of Lagares, who now has an eight game hitting streak. You can see that the turf isn't that fast. It's a little thicker, and you notice the little brown or dark spots uh, that are coming up off as the ball bounces. Believe it or not, folks, those are like rubber flakes, right? They're, they're like from old tires that have been kind of uh, ground up tires uh, that are used in the surface. So you'll see when the ball is on the AstroTurf, it, those flakes will jump up. Two pitches out of the strike zone here as Lucas Duda has a 2 0 count. With the double play in order, the defense not in the real strong shift, extreme shift they they showed in uh, City Field in the last two games. See Reyes just to the right side of second base. Ah! It looked like a 2 little 2 0 change up there from Hutchinson that was called a strike by home plate umpire Sean Barber. Hutchinson was 11 and 13 last year in 32 starts. The umpires Mark Wagner, Mike Winters, and Mike McClinsky at third base was the crew chief. Uh, Mike Winters, crew chief, sorry. Well, this is the same crew that started the, the two-game series uh, in City Field in that first game 
the home plate umpire Marty Foster had to leave that ball game and Sean Barber had to fill for him in the final game at, at first base and Sean today is behind the plate. 2-2 two -two count Hutchinson to Lucas Duda. Smallish lead by Ligaris at first base. Jams him with that fastball inside. You know, Ron, talking about turf, and you asked me in the open, I hated the cutouts. Uh, you, could, you had to play around the cutouts because the lip, particularly if you play behind the cutout, you can get a bad hop. Mm. Lagaris off at first base. Duda with a ball. Oh. What a play there by Goins at second base. Lagaris gets the second. But brilliant play by Ryan Goins at second base. Well, I'll say terrific backhand stab here. Bullet off the bat of Duda. It just, you know, this every position on AstroTurf, folks, whether you're playing back or particularly if you're playing in but if you're even if you're playing back in a middle infielder it's a hot corner every position is a hot corner two outs here for the Mets with Ligaris on second base and the DH Kadai are up at the plate off the end of the bat right to Goins who catches it in the air called by Mike Winters for the third out Ligaris went back with two outs. Didn't know how many outs there were. Not a great play. Oh, they got in at 3.30 in the morning last night. Mets get a hit, but no score. After one here at the Rogers Center. be the DH on this night's game. Donaldson, no one's hit more home runs against left-handed pitching than Donaldson st since 2013. 29 home runs. Blue Jays 10 and 4 this season against left-handers. Uh, they've scored 90 run, 91 runs. That's a six and a half runs per game against left-handers. Jose is struggling, believe it or not, against left-handers this season oh, and 31 at bats, hitting 194. We saw those Jeep numbers from Jonathan Neese. The one thing that Terry Collins said he's been doing much better keeping the ball down and sinking the ball away from right handers. He'll need it in tonight's game. Reyes with a oh. line shot to Roma Flores. Flores makes a diving play. Boy, we've seen some leather early in this game on the infield. What's interesting about this, Keith, is how shallow Flores is playing. Must be because of Reyes' speed. Nice play by Wilmer. Another thing too folks nice play see his hand there going across the turf you can get serious rug burn you've all done it you kids you slid on a rug and you come up with those raspberries on your thighs uh, you can get it done here on Astrip you've got to learn how to fall when you dive 
for a ball. When I was a rookie. I did it in St. Louis, and I ripped up my whole forearm. And uh, it took a very, very long time for that to heal. Josh Donaldson, 17 home runs, 45 RBI this season, having an MVP type season. MVP type season and wearing out the lefties. 413 on the year, four home runs, 10 RBI. Leads the American League in total bases with 146. That has numbers all across the board. Jonathan Neese with that good sinking fastball evens the count at two and two against Donaldson. Well, John's got to be careful. He's been hurt with that cutter. And I just think it's getting hurt with it because it's a lack of velocity. He's not the hard thrower he used to be. I like the backdoor curve with him against right handers. Fastball upstairs gets Donaldson with the strikeout. It's nice to see Jonathan with that ball down in the strike zone when he wants to go upstairs and he gets Donaldson swinging. And we'll take a quick look at your Metropolitan defense brought to you by Lexus. Ceciliani, I tell you what, he keeps hitting. He's got a spot there in left field. Kadire's doing the DH in, in this game. And the infield is the same. Darno behind the plate. Nice to have him back. Well, as we saw in City Field, no one quicker than Jose Bautista, middle plate in. Well, as quick a bat as you're going to see in the American League. I'll say. In that home run, the two home runs he hit, the two solo shots, and it was the first ball game. Off, one off Syndergaard. That was a 98 mile an hour fastball inside and off the plate in. And he hit that one in the second deck, Ron. And then off Familia, a high sinker. Uh, it didn't sink, but it was belt high, and it was three, four, five inches inside. He had a line drive right down the left field line. Very quick inside. That's the curveball I like against the right handers. For Nice. Especially on that 2 1 count, right? Yep. Backdoor it. John tries to tantalize him with that 2 2 sinker, but gets the count full. 3 2 count, two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Good sinking fastball. It'll be right where Herrera's playing up the middle. And at the end of one inning here in Rogers Center, 0 0, Mets, Blue Jays. Well, extraordinary moments happen every night in baseball, but on one night, they all happen in one place. Don't miss the 86th All-Star Game. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, Tuesday, July 14th, only on Fox. Terry Collins couldn't have had more praise for Travis Darno and having him back in the lineup and lengthening of that lineup. 
as he comes up to hit here in the bottom of the second. Well, Ron, no, the top Mets, of the second. Sorry. The Mets have just hung in there. They've had a rash of injuries. Now, this is coming off the winter and spring with Barwis, where everybody was supposed to be in terrific shape. Ground ball to second base. Boy, Goins has put it on a clinic at second base so far. Retreating back on that Astro turf, he caught it with the backhand, Keith. Well, you're never going to get a bad hop on turf when it's dry. So you can uh, all, pretty much bank on where the ball is going to come. And you see that, that the, the rubber coming off the ground there. It's almost like a mortar shell hitting or something. It's like an explosion. can't say I'd like to be playing with all that rubber around. And Flores being aggressive on that first pitch. Well, Wilmer hasn't walked too much this season, that's for sure, but he sure has been driving in some runs. 17 RBI in his last 21 games. What is it that Wally Backman told you? He said that Wilmer hitter. Flores is a clutch hitter and drives in runs. And he's leading this Met club in RBI with 32. Likes that. See both pitchers so far. Siciliani on deck for the Mets have been working very quickly. We've seen that from John Nice on the last couple of starts, but here not getting a chance to watch Hutchinson as much. He's working just as quickly. Another breaking ball, 2 1. This one doesn't come over the plate. 3 1 count here to Wilma Flores. He's got a nice slider. Challenges Wilma Flores and jams him. Martin over near the Mets dugout and he wow. makes a basket catch. Beautiful. Not going to see many more catchers that are as athletic as Russell Martin. Well, he finds out where the where the wall is. Makes a very athletic play. It doesn't look that good, you know, with the catcher with all that gear on. Uh, that's a nice play. I mean, it should be made. It's the big leagues, but it's not an easy play. I thought it was pretty style master for a catcher. Very good as Daryl Siciliani who's playing left field with Kadir DHing. I'm liking this kid more and more. I, I see him play, Ron. Really like his swing, his approach. Well, what's good about him as he takes that first pitch up in the strike zone is that he's a guy that Terry Collins says, I don't know how to explain him. He gets his no batting gloves, gets hands on his dirt on his hands. He's just a ball player. He hustles. He's a good base runner. What I've seen so far, he's made a couple of nice base running plays where he's advanced on, a, on on poor throws. He's heads in the game. He's been an asset here. Breaking ball down from Hutchinson. The other thing that Siciliani, that Terry Collins talked about, is that said that he's had a career in the minor leagues of always being hurt. He's in much better shape than he's ever seen him. Fastball poured right by him upstairs. Looks like to me, and uh, it just looks that like Hutchison is uh, sneaky. Got a sneaky fastball. I totally agree. 2 2 here with two outs against Siciliani. And he throws it by him for a strikeout here to end the top of the second inning as there's no score in the Rogers Center.
Well, bottom of the second tier at Rogers Center. Edwin Encarnacion up. Pulls the ball down the line, but foul past the Hada. Encarnacion in the first two games of this, I guess we could still call it this series. Oh, I would move north. Uh, he likes the ball much like Batista, middle end. Another guy that can be pitched to, but very dangerous. Curveball for Nice. I remember when Encarnacion first came up, he was a third baseman in the Cincinnati Reds organization. Ever since coming to Toronto and playing first, though, he has taken off with the bat. There's that change up again from Jonathan Nice. Seems like he's giving it away a little, Keith. Um, I agree. I think I mentioned it earlier, just kind of shoving it. A little alteration in the point of release. One of the things that is so important when you pitch in a ballpark that gives up a lot of home runs is you got to try to pitch up in the count. You cannot get in fastball type situations against these hitters. From where we sit here, you can honestly hear Encarnacion as he asked Sean Barber if the last pitch was a strike that he swung at. Location he's asking for. Popped up. Darno over. He's going to make the play. Handles the ball over to Lucas Duda. Well, there's been two plays now uh, of sim similarity. Two line drives on the infield. One to going at second base and one to Flores. Both diving on line drives. And then two pop-ups. As you see Darno make that play there. And uh, Russell Martin making one earlier. So you got two first basemen that play deep on those balls. And they're not fast afoot. It makes more responsibility for the catchers to catch the ball more up the line. Chris Colabello up for the Toronto Blue Jays. One thing that catchers are taught, if the ball is outside, it's more apt to be towards the first baseline, down the middle, straight over their head. And if it's inside on the right-handed hitter and fouled back, it's more to be to the left-hand side. That's how they're taught to try to locate a ball that's hit foul in the air. There's Russell Martin on deck. I like what I see from Nice thus far. You know, competition's a very, very good thing. And he's got a little snap on that curveball tonight. I just like when Jonathan Neese has a purpose. He's pitching uh, with a quick tempo. You know, his body language is not the best of the Mets pitchers. And that's something that he's always had to work on. When he's working quickly, his body language is better. Still pitching behind in the count here on two consecutive batters. Encarnacion and now here to Colabello. Colabello is one of those players, and I'm sure Gary addressed it in the first two games of the series. One of those guys you have to tear the uniform off. He's been everywhere to play. He walks here on a three and one count against Jonathan. Well, Russell Martin was a big signing in the winter for this Toronto Blue Jays team. They thought they needed a catcher who would be the leader and kind of mentor for their staff. And he's been all of that and more. Ten home runs. Big power numbers here in the smaller ballpark than he had in Pittsburgh for John Gibbons' crew. Former Met catcher John Gibbon. Former teammate of ours, Ron. Yep. Well, I talked to Buck Martinez, the former manager here up in uh, Toronto is uh, now has done the radio TV broadcast mm -hmm. for this team said Russell Martin brought a different uh, attitude here. He's kind of taken over the ball club. He's the leader of this club. And you know even when you're in a veteran you really have to have a tremendous status which I you know Russell Martin's a very fine player but to come over in one season and you're not even halfway through and take control of the clubhouse that says something about him. A little late on that fastball for Nice. I also think it means a lot for Canada to have a, a native son catching for their Canadian team. Although Russell's from Montreal. Danny Valencia on deck. Two players have made a difference for the Blue Jays so far this season. Donaldson at third base and Russell Martin behind the plate. Both leaders. Ball hit in the air to right field. Grandisham should have it pretty easily. Settles in his glove and there's two outs here.
You know, when the roof was closed here in the day, I remember playing here when there used to be 55,000 folks here, and this was one of the loudest places in all of baseball. Uh, the outfielders would sometimes have trouble catching it when the roof was closed. But a beautiful night tonight, and of course it's open. Andy Valencia giving Donaldson a break, who's DH and Valencia still a good defensive third baseman, has a little bit of power. And he's killing left handers too. Well, the Toronto Blue Jays have been around since 1977. Those two World Series titles, 1992 and 1993, back to back. Boy, they had some good teams in those early 90s. Dwayne Ward, Tom Henke, Roberto Alomar, John Olerud, Paul Molitor, yeah. Devon White. Molitor was DHing then. Uh, out of the Milwaukee, Dave Winfield got one of the big hits Dave in that seventh game of the World Series when they, when they, they beat the. Uh, well, Who did they beat? They beat. In uh, 92, they beat. 93, they beat the Phillies. That's what I thought. Oh, it was Atlanta. Yeah, 92. They beat Atlanta. Remember, um, and Winfield had the redeemer basically because he had the horrible series with the with the Yankees against the Dodgers. I think he got one hit in that series, and Winfield, of course, Steinbrenner didn't had not he didn't have good things to say about Dave had a Hall of Fame career. But Winfield got the big hit in the seventh game, I believe, it was a double down the left field line, right over the bag. That's the most difficult part of, of facing this team is that up and down this lineup, including Valencia and others, anyone can leave at any time. Again, behind in the count for Jonathan. I remember playing against those teams. I was supposed to be, there's Joe Carter who had that big home run. He'll never hit a bigger one, Joe, in 1993. But playing against those ball clubs, Roberto Alomar at that time with Ken Griffey Jr. was the best player in baseball. Three one breaking ball for the East doesn't find the corner and two walks have two runners on here for the Blue Jays. He shows you a little bit of a change for Jonathan Neese a guy that was mostly all cutters now is throwing his curveball and change up behind in the count more often as Kevin Pilar you were mentioning last night had a base rent running error. Oh but in the lineup today is nth degree. <laughs> My goodness, runners on first and second. He was the back runner. Down three runs, base hit the right field. He overran the runner at third, trying to advance to third. Boy, that was a big, that was a big, big the bases would have been loaded, nobody out. The Mets were in trouble. Just had his head down, right? Wasn't paying attention. All the way, he wasn't, yeah. yes. Well, he's got tremendous speed, tremendous athlete. Here, base hit to right field. And the runner is going to be sent on Granison. Granison just lobs the ball into second base. As Chris Calabella will get on with a walk, scores the first run for the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, good approach, Ron, right here. You got a sinker ball, left hander. And he goes, his whole approach was to go up the middle. And the Mets Herrera playing up the middle. So Opened up that hole. I don't know why they played him yeah. so much to pull, but they got the charts, we don't. That was some kind of shift for the right handed eighth place hitter Pilar as Colabello scores. So two walks have bitten John Neese. Well, the light hitting Ryan Goins is up but he's made his mark on this game already with some tremendous defense and Kevin Pilar at first base a threat to steal. That's Valencia on third base. As Pilar at first. One of the things that we've seen, I think, has been a, a constant theme for Jonathan is not only the unearned runs, but kind of putting that finger in the dike. When things start to go wrong, sometimes they go wrong in multitudes. As Travis Darnell uh -huh. trying to get Pilar, they put the play on, gets the throw to home, and they've got Valencia in a rundown. Tejada's going to tag him for the third out. And the Mets play that play perfectly. Blue Jays tried to drop a little college on them, and the college play didn't work. Valencia goes on the throw. 
but played beautifully by the Mets, and the rundown works perfectly as to how to tag Valencia for the third out, and no score here still in Toronto. Very nice fundies on the rundown. Well, Ruben Tejada here up against Hutchinson in the top of the third inning. So far, neither pitcher has, has started with a plow. Most of them have been pitching behind in the count. See Tejada's numbers. Big swing from Ruben Evans to count. Ruben's only played, and this is his 35th game of this season. Hitting 322 over his last 50, yeah. 15 games, excuse me, Ron. Uh, eight RBI. Doing a good job at third base. Brand new daddy. Fastball down the middle, hit very well to center field. Pilar back on the baseball and makes a beautiful play running away there in center field for the first out. Well, he kind of timed this one, didn't he, a little bit? Not really. Just he knew he had it, so he just kind of loped after it. But it does tell you, Keith, how much the ball travels here. Tejada, who's not a center field home run hitter, almost hit it out of the ballpark here. And another thing, too, about this ballpark, Ron, that's unique, uh, only because there's only two AstroTurf fields in today's game, but the, uh, the warning track. Is not dirt, folks. It's just colored. That's AstroTurf, yeah. too. So as an outfielder, you don't know the difference in texture when you're going from turf or grass and all of a sudden you hit dirt you know you're on the track well on AstroTurf you're going only difference is you're, if, you, if you can look down and see the color then you know you're on the turf yeah so it's just painted AstroTurf right. like so you said it's, it's much more difficult for outfielders going back so it's a big advantage defensively outfield wise for the Blue Jays and in, in their 81 games mm -hmm. of course that they play here against any opponent Well, that's what we've seen from most pitchers when they get ahead of Herrera, a steady diet of breaking pitches, but Herrera's been doing a much better job of laying off of those pitches and working the count. At lunch we had here today, we saw Devon White. As Herrera fouls another one back. Devo, I think, one of the best center fielders I ever saw play. Played here and with the Angels. Curtis, and Gra Curtis Gramson on deck. That was a good indoor breaking ball. Starts right at Herrera and breaks out over the plate. And Herrera caught looking. 
Well, it just kind of backs up on the inside corner. That's what it was low or not it meant to be on the outside corner. Tough pitch. Herrera's uh, learning on the school of hard knocks. You know, he's thrown out there in the water. Go swim, sink or swim. I think he's doing quite well. Granderson up for a second at bat. He flew to center field in his first at bat. Eight home runs, 20 RBI. And I think of late, Keith, I don't know if you've noticed this too, Curtis has gotten more into pull mode, it looks like to me. He's pulled a little bit more, there's no question. And as a result now, uh, the, that, you can see the Toronto shift here, the pyramid. Actually, I call it, I like to call it the triangle. For all you geometry uh, whizzes out there, you can figure it out. For me, it's a little difficult. It wasn't my forte. <laughs> I just got by in math. Did enough. To wasn't get your by. strength, eh? I got, did enough to get by, and I never liked it. Another fly ball to left center field, but this one hit much better. As Pilar and Colabello cannot make that play, it's one hop and the point to the sky by Pilar to indicate that the ball one hopped and over the wall for a ground rule double for Granderson. Well, I mentioned that he's been pulling more, but outstanding going the other way here. Well, the problem is Colabello was playing a little shallow. Uh, they were playing, uh, Pilar was playing a little slightly to shade to the pull, but Colabello was in the gap. He was too shallow. Mets have their first hit and 10th double for Curtis Granderson. Mets looking for a two out rally here with Ligaris at the plate. Nice block by Martin. Russell Martin, one of the best in baseball at blocking the baseball. Just a, uh, a gem back there. It's very athletic. Dare nice. I say quick. You usually don't use the word quick when you're talking about catchers, but Martin is. Can I ask you what kind of hat that is behind home plate when the third row that fan is wearing? They get our Billy Webb to give us a shot. Folks, you'll see the hat once we get the center field camera. It's to the left of the umpire on the third row. But what kind of hat is that? That looks more like it should be in New Orleans than in Toronto. <laughs> Good pitch on the corner there from Hutchinson. Allison Wonderland. Oh, oh, I see. Different colors. Duke. Is that a Blue Devil hat? <laughs> Throw down by Martin trying to catch Granderson napping, but the veteran Granderson gets back in plenty of time. Russell Martin loves to throw the ball around the diamond. He is on call for the entire game. Granderson tries to get that secondary lead, but as soon as the ball goes past the plate, all veterans are taught to get back to the bag. Well, all ball players are, not only veterans. Yep. Good pitch by Hutchinson again on the corner behind in the count. And here's Sean Barber, the home plate umpire. Bark out, 3 2. Two outs here in the top of the third. Fastball fouled straight back by Ligaris. A very pleasant evening here. Up in Toronto. It's one of those cities where as announcers you wish you had a three or four game series. This is yeah. such a great town. We're in and out. Yep. Very clean city. A breaking ball. Off the strike zone, so a walk to Lagares. He's on twice now with a hit and a walk. As the Mets have two runners on base for the dangerous Lucas Duda. Lucas hit a rocket his first at bat. That was a diving stab by Goings at second base. Robbed him of a base hit.
Big shift on Lucas again. Goings out in the outfield around 20 feet deep in the outfield. And keep Valencia though at his position because of Granderson on second base. And Hutchinson, when you watch him pitch, it seems like he likes to nibble around the corners of the plate. Not overly aggressive as a pitcher. You now he's coming off one of his worst starts of the season where he gave up eight runs in less than three innings at Fenway Park. Two change ups in a row to Lucas Duda gets the count to 2 0. Oh. Well, that's what they've been doing with Lucas, has been feeding him that change up and feeding it just that tempting change. It starts out on the knees and then sinks out of the strike zone down in a, in a, in a way. And Lucas is kind of getting back into his old habits of chasing that pitch. So when he stops, he's going to get yeah. a diet of it. To my point, 50 pitches so far for Hutchinson, only 28. Have been strikes. That's a good pitch, 2 0. A little breaking ball over for a strike. Backdoor slider and 2 0. It's not a pitch you want to hit. It's when you spit on. Okay, okay you're 2 and 1 now. Granderson with a big lead off second base. Ligaris on the Astro turf at first. Two breaking balls in a row. Evens count. Well, back to back, pretty good pitches. Last ball just by him for the strikeout here. The Mets do not score in the top of the third for the strikeout to Lucas Duda. Still 0 0 here at the Rogers Center. And two and a half years later, construction was nearly complete. The Sky Dome would house a hotel, five restaurants, the biggest ever video scoreboard, and to top it all off, a technological wonder. Sky Dome built and started in 86, 89, in the middle of the season it was ready to go. And Tom Cheek, 4306 of the games he did in a row for this Toronto Blue Jays franchise, one of the great guys of all time. And Ford C. Frick Award winner. Radio, sorry, not television. Interesting how the stadium now is dated. A uh, retractable roof was quite something unique. And the scoreboard certainly isn't the largest scoreboard, I believe, in today's game. There's so many huge scoreboards today. But back then it was uh, something special. Well, like the Astrodome was the eighth wonder of the world in Houston. That That's was kind point. of how it was here in Canada.
Mike Owens runs the count full against Jonathan Neese. A lot of the players, there's a hotel attached to this Rogers Center. They used to stay there in the day, a lot of the players. There it is. Ground ball to the right side. Hit very softly. Duda with the exchange. No. Duda can't make the play. Well, it wouldn't have mattered if he made the play. With Nice was late getting over it, following through towards the third base line. Gomez was going to beat Nice to first base, I believe, Ron. Yeah, you're right, Keith. I misspoke. I thought he was going to shovel it over there with his glove, but he never did catch the baseball. But there was no play, really, at first base. Watch Nice. That little half second of delay really ruins the play. And it's so much tougher for the left-handers to get over there because they follow through to the third base side. Reyes up now here in the bottom of the third, lined out to Wilma Flores in his first at bat. Round ball. Nice play by Tejada to first base for the oh, out. He did not have to play at second. That was nothing but trouble right there. What a play by Ruben. Well, the one thing you get with Ruben is since David Wright's been out and they've decided to go with Ruben at third base, Keith, he's made such a difference defensively. Well, Ruben's got the glove. We know that. He can play all three positions, but this one is a little more uncharted territory for Rube, and uh, he's playing it quite well. Josh Donaldson up for the Blue Jays. Struck out on a fastball up at his eyes in his first at bat. Donaldson was a team leader with some of those good A's teams that reached the postseason. He's trying to do the same thing here in Toronto. Takes a healthy cut every time he's up there, I'll tell you that. Well, this not ballparks in the major leagues. I mean, it looks so new and beautiful here. It's hard to believe that it's even on the list, but Rogers Center makes that list with Fenway Park and Wrigley Field. Well, the Mets have handled Donaldson in this series. He's 0 for 9 so far. 0 for 5 in the first game, 0 for 3 in the second game. Well, the Blue Jays face both Syndergaard and Harvey. Hard throwing right handers. They feasted, like you said before, Keith, on left handed pitching. Just fouls that breaking ball away to stay in the at bat. What'd you say? 10 and 4 they are against left handed pitching yes. this year. And 20 and 12 at home. It should be. It's foreign soil. And the breaking ball fouled off. What time did you guys get in last night? That uh, Terry Collins was talking about his team was tired today. No, well, I didn't get to bed till 3:35 to be precise. Were you guys held in customs, or no? We were held on the runway. Uh, they did not have someone right in front of our gate. There was no one to bring out. What do you call that thing that comes out? The gang punk gangway. Another fastball up in the strike zone. Swung through from Donaldson. Another strikeout for Nice. We uh, high fastball again twice. Same pitch, Donaldson chasing. There was no one there, and it must have fallen asleep somewhere. Uh, no, I know what you're saying. The jetway that comes out to the plane because it was a good 25, almost a half hour waited for them to bring the jetway out so we can get off. And then they had to unload the bags, folks. And this is, you know, this happens when you go across the border, particularly now after 9 11. Things have become a lot different than back when, when Ronnie and I played. But they unloaded the, then they had to unload the plane. All the luggage that with the players' luggage that took time, another 20 minutes, and then ah! we got off the plane in tens. So it's on 50 people. There was five different uh, sections oh, wow. from the front of the plane. Ten would get off, go get their luggage, and then go through customs. Then the next ten. So needless to say, it was a good hour and a half before we close to an hour and a half before we got out of the airport. And on a 25 minute, 20 minute drive downtown, and I remember turning off my light at 3:35. So imagine you're a little tired. Imagine what the players feel like yeah, today. I'm, I'm just sitting here. I had a nice two o'clock nap. 
Good curveballs there from Jonathan Neese with the base open. He went after Bautista with four curveballs and retired him as there's no score here again. Mets against Toronto Blue Jays. Michael Kadire up for the Mets. Amazingly, during the commercial, the Mets, the <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays got a run. I didn't mention that to break. Sorry, folks. I'm only going to make about 1,500 mistakes tonight. That's uh, one of about 100 now. So, one nothing Blue Jays. Dyer made that mad dash in this series, in the first game, I believe, right on the Lucas Duda kind of pop up the left field. To score the tying run. Well, they were playing so deep, and John Gibbons remarked that, and it's really. It's were they not, playing like no doubles or something? They're playing no doubles, but he was playing on the track, and it was. Um, who in the heck was out there? But it was Carrera that was out there. Uh, it was Carrera out there, and, a, and a, it was a change. Calabella went to first, yeah. and. Uh, they were playing way too deep, and John Gibbons, the manager of Toronto, mentioned that you know it's a bigger ballpark, uh, our, our mistake, but it's no excuse. You know, even when you're playing no doubles, you don't play back on the warning track. I don't care if you're playing at Wrigley. Fastball upstairs by Kadir. I think I always equated Keith to when they play guys on the line. It doesn't mean that you straddle the line. Right. It means you make sure you play in a position that the ball won't go down the line. Same with doubles. Hammered to center field by Kadir on the line. Good jump by Kevin Pilar as he makes the catch on the line out from Michael Kadir. One out here on the top of the fourth. You know, we were talking about before about some of the different kinds of numbers in the American League and National League as you see this presented by DraftKings and to see if there's any difference. The one glaring one for me, of course, pinch hitters used is, is going to be larger in the National League because American League you have the the set lineup, but I'm surprised how close a lot of the numbers are between the American and National League. Here. Well, I'm particularly uh, the one with the number of pitchers used in the game. I thought that it would be a lot a bigger differential. It was slightly over four in the National League and 3.87 in the American. Saw sack bunts were up, but that's because the pitcher hits in the National League. They're going to. Sa sacrifice bunt a couple times ball game. Travis Darno with a ground out to Goins in his first at bat. Hutchinson seems like he has a lot better breaking ball than he did in his last start Fenway Park. I was able to 
watch that start on my computer as he struggled to give up eight runs in less than three innings pitched. Hutchinson's numbers at home ERA under three on the road ERA over nine so he loves pitching in the confines here of the Rogers Center. I think Darno has made his presence felt since his return. I just felt he was the most I mean him and David Wright obviously were the two most unfortunate of the rash of injuries this Met ball club has had. I can't recall ever a team that has had guys go down like this Met ball club and and to their credit and, uh, Terry Collins as this team has hung together. Folks at home I'll tell you they're in first place. No matter how either way you slice it, it's first place. Breaking ball pulled foul from Darno. You know, it's interesting, Keith. Terry Collins always mentions that Kadire, who's more vocal than Granderson, the two veterans on the team, have always been pushing the ball club to, to stay focused and to stay positive and worry about the players that are here, not worry about the players that aren't here. And that's why they have this first place record. Hanging curveball there from Hutchinson hit the center field, but right in the tracks for Kevin Pilar as he catches it for the second half. During tonight's game, you can get interactive with SNY Game Day on SNY.tv, featuring pitch by pitch coverage, player cards, and in depth stats. Check out SNY Game Day on SNY.tv, your online home of all things New York sports. Wilma Floor is up, popped out to the catcher Russell Martin on a fine play in his first at bat. So, so far, Hutchinson has come into this game with an ERA of 5.75, but an ERA under three at home is throwing a nice ball game. And that the uh, despite you watch him pitch, there's no rhyme or reason. You don't even need a a, a blueprint to try to face him. It's going to be fastball and breaking balls away. That's really what you see from Hutchinson. Yep. He's got a sinker. He's got a straight fastball. Uh, I don't like to say two seamer, four seamer, folks. To me, that doesn't for the hitter doesn't describe the motion of the pitch, the movement of the pitch. It's like I don't want to hear he's got a two. I, I know what it means. But I want to hear it. he's got a sinker key. He's got a straight fastball. He's got a slur mm -hmm. sinking change. So uh, those are the things I want. I want no movement. Pop up off the bat of Wilma Flores. Reyes goes over. He has the edge and makes the play in fair territory for the third out for the Toronto Blue Jays. As they're leading one nothing we're celebrating 10 years of Mets baseball on SNY after the break we'll go back and relive another one of the thrilling moments from the past. September 7th, 2006, brought to you by Pepsi. Earlier today, fans were asked to tweet their memories of SNY at SNY TV using hashtag SNY 10 years. And today's tweet comes from at Ryan Kendall. 
B. Dad and I were there in the upper deck. No more exciting play than Arias hit to the fence that the crowd rose with every blistering stride. I used to always say that the triple was the most exciting play for Reyes. But I think that one is more exciting. Who was the third base coach there? I, 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 I couldn't focus in on it. 2006. Who was the third base coach for the Mets? It's we'll get after it. We'll get back to it. Because it's unusual. Most third base coaches give the go sign with their right hand doing a reverse windmill. That third base coach did it with the it was Manny Acta did it with the left hand with the forward window. That's pretty funny that you would notice that. Yes, to watch because usually they do the right hand. Man, there's Manny. Uh, he's very good in that frozen motion. Man. <laughs> Reyes could run. It's one of the most exciting plays you'd ever see is when he would take off at any time, whether it was himself hitting a triple inside park home run that we saw as this ground ball broken back to Wilma Flores. It's short. The true throw to first base for the first out to start the inning. Boy, I don't know if it can... Here you go. There Keith. you go. Left handed. So he's got the right arm pointing. You're going home and the left arm saying, come on, step on it. Very nice. And Reyes saying, are you kidding me? I'm getting a little tired here. I had one inside the park home run in St. Louis as a young man. I put a line drive off the center field fence in Bush, the old Bush Stadium. Remember, there was the padding on the wall, and around a foot above the padding was the remainder of the wall. It was concrete. Concrete, yeah. And I hit it off. I think Dick Ruthven was with the Braves then, and it hit the concrete and rolled back all the way to the infield. And uh, I barely made it home. I did a belly flop at home plate. I ran out of gas. Were you, were you gassed? How many innings were you gassed for? A couple? Uh, I can't recall. <laughs> I was young. I bounced back. <laughs> Colabello took a good at bat in his first at bat when he walked off Jonathan and scored the only run in this ball game. Doesn't show it on the radar gun, but it seems like John's throwing a little harder in tonight's game, just like he was in his last start. Four runs given up over seven innings, two of them earned. Brown pounded into the AstroTurf, and it takes a left turn, and Todd is wise to let it go foul. Now, there's a difference in turf and grass, and you saw that ball really have a lot of English on it. Watch it take this hard left turn. Once you hit on top of it, you're right. It's not going to happen on grass. Not going to happen on grass. If that play was on grass, Todd probably catches that and tries to make the play at first base. Like a John McEnroe serve, serving someone out of the off the court. The second serve. Yes. He's put a lot of spin on it. Just to kick it wide. Big John. John was in the booth last night. Oh, was he? Yeah, he came Oh, fantastic. The game. With his lovely daughter. Good pitch there from Jonathan Neese. Catches Colabello looking. Fastball away for the second out. Strikeout of Colabello. John's getting his little rhythm going. There's a. That had a lot of play. Got caught looking for something else. That's right down Broadway. Yeah. Russell Martin, the catcher up. Travis Darno, since he's come up to the Mets, has been a very good adept at stealing strikes at the bottom of the strike zone. I think he did it there. First gotta, pitch change up to Martin misses. Got to be careful with that change up, John. Uh, tipping it off, just change, altering his his uh, motion. And when you say that, Keith, you mean he's slowing it down, or he's changing his arm angle, he's, or he's got his wrist more cocked and he's shoving it, and also he's slowing his arm speed down at the last moment. Got to be careful with that. It uh, gives it away. Another ground ball to the backhand of Wilma Flores. Again with the true throw. Two pull, two outs in this inning by Wilma Flores as Jonathan Neese gets through the fourth inning. One nothing Toronto.
at Rogers Center tonight and tomorrow and Tropicana Field later in the summer. But in its peak time when AstroTurf ruled in baseball, these were all the stadiums. I always found the Kingdome in Seattle the toughest. It felt like I was playing in a garage. Really? A dome for me was always the most difficult. And State Olympique in, in uh, Montreal was a, a tough one. Uh, only because they had uh, they had uh, green and yellow seats. It looked like you were playing in a, in a, in a lily pad, a, a lily pond. And the lights were tinted. They weren't so bright white. They were kind of yellowish. Never saw the ball well. And they had a pretty doggone good pitch instead. Yeah, that didn't hurt, right? Yeah. And the dome, they had no a backdrop to per se. It was an opening that led back, was kind of back into shadow. Um, I'll explain a little for you. The Giants had a horrible time with it. Instead of having a backdrop, a wall behind home plate, it used to be when you took BP, they would open it. It's where the big trucks would come in. It would open up in the center field, be a big opening, and the trucks would come in and drop off all the supplies, I guess, for the game. Uh, and uh, they would close it up. But it was all depth perception. You didn't have a wall. You were looking into a deep, dark uh, passageway wide, and that just kind of was difficult. I know the dome in Minnesota was difficult because it was downstairs. It was the only place in baseball that you would get dressed, have to walk 25 stairs or so downstairs to go to the field. It was the strangest thing ever. Siciliani takes strike three. Well, Daryl is finding out that anything close, and that's that's a borderline strike. And you're a youngster, and He's not been getting the calls. Anything close has been going against him. And, and a couple it, times he kind of looked back at umpires and when you're a young rookie, you cannot do that. That'll get around the umpires and you're not going to get the calls. He's getting better at it, but he's not getting anything his way because he's a rook. I think also what happens, Keith, is that when you've had a little success and certainly coming into this game, Siciliani's been hitting 400 in June. The rest of the league starts to throw you some breaking balls. See if you can handle the breaking balls. Tejada hits this ball to left field, gets a lot of it, and it hits off the wall in left center field. Colabello gets on it and tr throws it in, but Tejada with a double for the Mets. It's two balls that have gotten over the head of Colabello. Well, Colabello's playing really shallow, Keith. Not that time. He just he's not that fleet of foot out there and that balls off the base of the wall That ball was rocketed. So nice a B by Ruben Two balls hit very well in his first two bats a fly out to center field now a double for Ruben as Dilson Herrera comes up I'm saying with Siciliani saying that they've been doing to Herrera just a steady diet once they get ahead of breaking balls Got to prove he can hit the breaking ball at this level. Breaking ball check, no swing. Said by first base umpire Mark Wegner. Well, what I've seen from Herrera, Ron, is uh, for a young man, 21 years old, he's got a good approach. He stays in on pitches. He's got a good eye. He chases sometimes, but he's young. But I think he's he gets more experience. He's going to be fine. I really think he's got a chance to be a good one. Well, I had a chance right there. Missed that 2-0 and pitch down the middle. Fouled his trade back. And he was the young player in the trade with the Pirates that brought Vic Black, correct? I believe it was if I correct me if I'm wrong Herrera was the second guy in that trade At that point he was just an a ball player so good scouting down there because this kid's got some talent What a fastball one handed foul by Herrera he's beating a lot of the Met hitters with that fastball upstairs Ron he just to me has got to be sneaky. It just has to be sneaky. They're not squaring it up in, in modern day uh, parlance. So I'm working on it first. I never can stop when I hit the ball good that I squared it up. Well, what did you do when you hit it square? I hit the dog out of it. 
Breaking ball hit down the line but foul by Herrera. Well Ron <laughs> yeah. you having fun. I am completely nervous don't know what I'm doing and I'm trying real hard. If that, that counts for anything. I think you're doing great. It's like working with Gary. I think it's uh, we're so used to working with each other. You've well, got much more than nothing different than I'm doing. No the more responsibility for you. Well so I, I feel for you. I feel you. I, I feel I, your pain. I will say we rely on Mr. Cohen a lot both you and I. <laughs> Oh, oh see. nice! A, You're I, being a good teammate again, Keith. I, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. It's happy in April or or uh, September, late September game. It's, uh, I think it's a World Series game because I have a turtleneck on. I never had one except for the uh, World Series game, and I'm rubbing my head, which means I'm having a tough time. It's probably Game Seven. Serrera swings through that for the another strikeout for Drew Hutchinson. Hutchinson's getting that strikeout upstairs. It's straight. He's just. Getting it by people. Five strikeouts on the day. Curtis is brandishing up for his third at bat. Flew out to center field in his first. A double in his second at bat. Two outs here with Ruben Tejada at second base. Change up from Hutchinson as the Toronto Blue Jays again go into the shift. Against Curtis Granderson Reyes, right behind the bag and to the right of Tejada. You see, if you have a really good fielding first baseman with good range to his right, you don't have to bring that second baseman over so far. But Encarnacion does not move well. He's pretty much got an anchor. He's anchored there. So Granderson the left hand hitter you've got a red hot Lagaris in the on deck circle. I think Granderson's the guy that Hutchison wants to go after. Hutchison seems to have an advantage against right handed hitters. Yep. But it goes three and oh on Curtis. Curtis we know likes to swing the bat three and oh. We'll see if he swings it here against Hutchinson. He does, but pulls it foul. Well, I tell you what, I'm surprised that hasn't gotten around the league. And lo and behold, the only Met batter that has faced Hutchinson is Curtis Granderson. And guess what? He's two for two against him coming into this game. So with the base hit today, the double, he's now three for four against him. So he's probably aware of that. Change up, hit foul by Granderson. And the count to three and two. This is what they call pitching into the shift, folks. Is that if you have an option on the mound and you have a shift shifted infielders, if your option is you go with something slow, you want him to pull the ball on the ground. It gives you the best chance for an out. Coming in. Still hit foul by Granderson as he's extremely quick on Hutchinson. Granderson's been the one guy against Hutchinson's fastball that's been right on it. Terry Collins, I think, has done a terrific job with all the injuries this ball club did. Marshaled his team in first place. Lifted by Granderson in foul territory. Donald Valencia running over there, but four rows deep. Those for a pitcher are always the toughest. Here you go, you make a real great pitch, 3 2, but the hitter is good enough to foul that pitch off, and you've got to come back with another one. Off the end of the bat, broken bat for Granderson, right to Reyes is a pop up. Strands to Hada at second base. Still 1 0. Blue Jays over the Mets.
to nothing over the Mets. Only five hits total by these two ball clubs. I'm very ah. impressed that this Met ball club, Met pitching staff, mm. this team came in the Blue Jays, scoring eight runs a game over 11 game hitting streak, a winning streak, mm. and they did not buckle under, but have been really taking it to these hitters. Ground ball hit foul by Valencia. You're right, Keith. That's something to, to hold your hat on right. is that uh, Cindy Guard pitching against his old team Absolutely. can come out and pitch six solid innings and 11 strikeouts. Right. And right. Harvey can not walk anybody and pitch seven strong innings, and Jonathan Good through four here. Another high fastball that gets Valencia for the strikeout. Let's check in with Steve Gelbs. Well, Ron, Travis Darno really seems like he hasn't missed a beat since coming back from the DL. And offensively, he's looked good, but the one thing that the coaching staff keeps talking about is how seamless his transition has been back behind the plate. And remember, that was something at the end of last year that this team was really focused on improving his past balls, the way that he uh, tried to frame up pitches, the fact that he wasn't blocking as many balls, throwing the baseball, and it really did improve. This first uh, couple of weeks of the season because of a lot of work that Bob Guerin did with him this offseason and in spring training a very specific new program. So the fact that he got injured Bob Guerin was a little worried about that didn't want him to miss a beat every single day while he was down rehabbing he either spoke with Travis Darno or John Davis the rehab coordinator just imploring them yeah the hitting's nice but remember keep working on that defense and he said he's been very pleasantly surprised by what they've seen Base hit there by Kevin Pillar to start off this fifth inning that report sponsored by Prism thanks Steve well it seems like the third base hit off of uh, Nice. Two of them, Pilar. Pilar is the one that got him figured out. And both have been to the same yeah. part of the field. Opposite field. Pilar has decided to hit the ball to right field, and it's given him two hits here as Ryan Goins comes to the plate for the Blue Jays. Pilar is a guy who can steal. Goins is a guy that you can hit and run with. So with the Blue Jays just leading by a single run, one nothing here, you might see some. John Gibbons, the manager, put on a play. You know, the Blue Jays live and die by scoring tons of runs. That's why they had that 11 game hitting streak. And they've scored less than five runs in 30 games this season. They're 3 and 27. So, Powerball is their game. Oh, beaten into the dirt by Goins. Last night in baseball was route night as the scores were 56 to 13 and all the games played the winners with 56 losers with 13 the Cubs are putting it to Cleveland tonight in the third 10 0 in the third six in the second and four more runs in the third Kristen Orphia has a home run has gone two for two <laughs> going to the base at the right center Granderson over to get it is thrown to second is going is going for a double and he's out at oh, second base oh. easily. As Wilma Flores applies the tag. What I tell you what the Blue Jays base running has been atrocious. One nothing game you set up a first and third. I know that Granderson has a, a weak arm but you got turf. It's a beautiful throw too by the way. But you can't get thrown out here. I mean it's poor judgment. It might be a weak arm too. Right field to third or right field to home, but certainly not to second base. As Goins turns this beautiful line drive and just the simple out for Jonathan Neese. Now they need a base hit to get a run where before it had been a sacrifice fly. Boy, this is he never hesitated. Just and, poor, poor judgment. And the play's right in front of him, so you're right. Poor judgment. Curtis leading the outfielders in assists this season. It's interesting to watch Reyes hit Keith. He's a switch hitter, but from the left side, he's very compact, has a good swing, tries to hit the ball on line drives or on the ground, and right handed, his swing is a lot bigger. Most switch hitters try to keep the same kind of swing on both sides of the plate. Reyes with the pop up to the right side. Duda 
settles under it. And John Neese works out of a little bit of a pickle with some bad base running by the Toronto Blue Jays. But still 1-0 Blue Jays over the Mets. Toronto leading 1 0. Juan Lagares up for the Mets. Mighty swing, but fouled back on the first pitch. Single and a walk for Lagares so far in this game as he remains hot. Steve Delabar up in the bullpen for the Toronto Blue Jays. Try and attempt at a bunt by Lagares. We've seen many attempts by Lagares, not many of them fair. This one goes foul. It's hard to deaden and Ronnie you'll test to this because you're a pitcher. It's much more difficult to bunt even to sacrifice as well as put down a drag bunt. I guess if you don't want to call it drag bunt today whatever but I'd like to call it that's what I grew up with. It's hard to deaden it on turf. Well good swing in there line drive to left field. Caught by Carlabella. We've seen a couple balls go over his head but playing shallow able to make that play on that sinking line drive from Lagaris. Well, he does make the play. Nice play by Colabello. Just a little belly flop there, Keith. You can see all those remnants of the tires that are in this outfield come spraying up. That'd be very helpful, wouldn't it? Doesn't feel like it, right? Hutchinson has been pitching very carefully to Lucas Duda in his first two at bats. Lucas with a line out in the strikeout. Good swing there down the left field line. Will it stay fair? Just. No, just foul is the call by third base umpire Mike McClinsky. This is kind of an excuse me swing. You see sometimes that ball is about six inches foul. You say to yourself, a guy's trying to go that way. Lucas was just kind of jammed by that ball and fought it off the left field. What's interesting is for only nine of the 25 players on the roster here for the Mets have ever played a game on AstroTurf. But you know when you think about it the real young players That's a good point. The real young players have played most of their life on travel teams that play on astral turf kind of facilities. Very rare to see big facilities that have grass anymore. There's that high fastball Ron. That's been sneaking by hitters. All night long. 
He called it sneaky, Keith. Got a little bit of movement moving away from the hitter Duda. Popped up to the left side. Donaldson was playing the shift. Lindsay saw he was playing the shift. Has to come over, has room, and he makes the catch. Let's go to Michelle Yu in the studio for a game break brought to you by Honda. Back to the ball game here. Michael Goddard are up for the Mets. Two outs here in the top of the sixth. Drew Hutchinson, who started opening day for the Blue Jays, looking like an opening day starter here this evening against New York. There's another high fastball under it. Tell you what, they got the bullpen up. I'd keep this guy in for another inning. He's strong. 0-2 pitch, though, drilled by Kadir. We've seen a lot of two strike hits. Kadir, here he comes to the second base, trying to tap that throw. And Kadir takes a good choice there and gets the double for the Mets with two outs. Well, he got a little bit frisky with his fastball there, Ronnie. He had an 0-2 count, could have wasted a pitch. Looks Kadir like, up to it. Looks like he was feeling pretty good because he had thrown a couple by Kadir, but Kadir was waiting for that third one, a hustle double. Puts him in scoring position. John Gibbons, the manager for the Blue Jays, is going to come out and wow. take the baseball away from Hutchinson and bring in Steve Delabar. The pitch here in the top of the sixth. Quick hook by John Gibbons. It's a Verizon call to the bullpen for the Blue Jays, who lead 1 0 over the Mets here at Rogers Center. Blue Jays reliever Steve Delabar, their go to guy this year. 10.5 strikeouts per every nine innings pitch. You can see his average's first batter face. John Gibbons, quick hook, even though Hutchinson threw 105 pitches. He looks strong to me. Guy can't get one more out. Wow. It was a quick hook, and you can tell that Hutchinson is. A little perplexed. Ground out and fly out so far for Darno in this game. Mm. That's a good split finger change up there from Delabar. Tall right hander pulls the string on Darno. Mm. 
Dyer with a two out double on second base. Another one hammered into the ground. One hopper for Valencia. And the third out made. Bellabar gets it for the Blue Jays to keep their lead at 1 0 here in Toronto. I think one of the prettiest cities in North America, Toronto. Donaldson leads off on the first pitch curveball, splits the outfielders. And he'll have himself a leadoff double for the Blue Jays. Fifth hit off Jonathan, Jonathan and the first hit in the series, the third game in this series, four game series. For Donaldson, a little lazy breaking ball out over the plate. It's Donaldson's 16th double on the season to go along with 17 home runs. Well, this has been probably the toughest out for the Mets pitchers, even though they pitched so well in this four game series, home and home. Again with the breaking ball blocked by Darno. Be interesting to see Batista's approach here. You know, one nothing ball game in the bottom of the sixth. He's a home run hitter. Do you want him to get the ball, get him over? Well, they say he's a very wise hitter. He's a guy that can drive the ball the other way. But boy, you just you don't want. He's your power hitter. You know, he, the guy behind him, Encarnacion too. Here's his career resume. Took him a while, 20th round draft pick, before he became the hitter he is now. Has become, though, strictly a pull hitter. The year he had 54 home runs, Keith, only one of them went to right field, the last one. Good pitch there by Nice, just off the corner, home plate umpire Sean Barber. Big pull on the infield for the Mets. Herrera way up the middle. Grounded foul, maybe off the foot of Bautista in this one nothing game. This is career batting. 258 average, 259 home runs. Fastball upstairs checked with Mark Wagner. He says Bautista did not go. 3 2 count. What do you think, Keith? No, I don't think he swung. I don't know. I think he checked. 
And with first base open, he's careful. Bautista with the walk. That's his 44th walk this season. That's third in the American League for Bautista. Well, whenever you pitch against this Toronto Blue Jays team, Keith, Donaldson, the right handers Donaldson, Bautista, and Carnacion, you have to get through those three at some point at a critical part of the game. Right in the middle of that lineup, they're right in the RBI spots. The number two position in the order now has become an RBI spot out of the blue. Darno with, with, with today's Saber metrics. Sorry, Keith. Darno went out to the mound to talk to Nice. All the infielders came in to make sure they're on the same page. Same page with the signs. <laughs> Middle in hitter right here, Encarnacion. Oh, that's a great note. Is a guy who doesn't strike out a lot, but still tremendous power. Good double play guy. Doesn't run well. Good pitch. I guess that says a little bit about us that 85 strikeouts is not considered striking out a lot now. When you put the ball out of the ballpark. Call the bellow on deck. Good breaking ball by Jonathan Nice and he takes care of Encarnacion. One, two, three. Very nice, Jonathan. Sinker away for strike one. Fastball in to tie him up. Up and in, 0 oh and 2, and drop a electric hook on him. Go sit down. <laughs> electric hook. That's how good it was. It was Lynchy. I got that from Lynchy. Chris Colabello, who has scored the only run in this ball game for the Blue Jays. Breaking ball could be two. No, it's up the middle by Flores. The second run Donaldson will score for the Blue Jays as Lagares runs the ball in. Stirring the pot is what they think they do here in Toronto. And a base hit RBI for Colabello scores Donaldson. Well, a bit surprised with the first two runners getting on base. There's no one up in the Met bullpen. This is on Jonathan here. A little lazy curve. Every now and again, Ron, I don't like it when he yeah. throws that that low velocity curve. It loses its crispness. Well, think about it. Donaldson, who's at second, he got there on a double on that slow, lazy curve ball, and Colabello drives him in on a low, lazy curve ball. I like it when Jonathan really snaps it off, puts some mustard on it. Foul straight back by Martin. Shows you though the mercurial nature of being a pitcher. That ball moved over three feet, and it's an easy double play ball. Said this turf is slow. Didn't seem very slow on the hit by Colabello. Ground ball to third base to Hada to second, Herrera to first, mm -hmm. and the Mets do get the double play ball. And Nice gets himself out of a bigger jam. But the Blue Jays still score another run and now lead two nothing. Here at the end of six.
Well, what a double play turned by the Mets, even though they gave up a run in that inning. Huge double play. Delabar stays in for the Blue Jays to face Flores. Well, defense is so critical here. Ruben, no wasted time. Perfect pick. Watch this Herrera turn it. He's got a gun, and I mean, you've got to turn that. But this young man at second base. He turns it well. What's the most important thing for a second base? Some fearlessness, Keith, to stay in there. Well, and I guess so. Yeah. yeah, I would think, and also I think a strong arm, and because uh, you've got to be able to flip it on the pivot. And uh, Herrera certainly has a strong arm. His tomorrow's probables for the Mets against the Blue Jays. The Double ARP group Bartolo Colon against R.A. Dickey. The rocking chair <laughs> pitching <laughs> duel. Last time you had two guys face each other that were over 40 years old. It's Greg Maddox against Jamie Moyer in 2008. R.A. Dickey only two and six this year. It has been a very, very uh, fruitful trade. That trade of RA here to Toronto for Syndergaard and uh, Travis Darno. And a minor leaguer was thrown in. That's doing quite well down the A ball level. Left hander Aaron Loop warming up for the. Blue Jays. Mm. Oh, fastball right by Flores for the first out here in the top of the seven. Nets have been uh, swinging under the high fastball all day. Did it five, oh, more than a few times with Hutchison and now Delabar just underneath it. Let's need a base run. A very interesting for Siciliani, third baseman Valencia playing him back. We have not seen him try to bunt for a base hit yet. Good sink. Delabar has that good sinking fastball, has that good four seamer that he threw by Flores, and that split finger changeup that he throws. Hmm. Strikeouts for Ceciliani. He's had a tough one. Well, Sunday on Jets Nation, hear from Todd Bowles and his expectations for the team, both on and off the field this season. Plus, get an inside look at Muhammad Wilkerson's unique off-season workout on all new Jets Station Sunday at 8:30 p.m. only on SNY. Bar, 31 years old from Fort Knox, Kentucky. Ball scalded up the middle, but Goins, like he has been all night long, playing in the right position as he retires to hot at first base. Blue Jays still lead 2 0.
United Bank starters numbers Hutchinson five and two thirds a tidy work no runs Jonathan Neese though has been outstanding also but has given up two and that's the difference. Well really what the difference in the game we mentioned in the open we've got an American League game a DH it kind of takes away the significance of your bench. Both teams have only three men on the bench for the DH. Um, you know you basically got your offensive lineup in there. So kind of who's playing is who's playing. So basically the moves are going to be defensive in nature more than likely from. Valencia broken bat ground ball to Dilson Herrera for the first out. And for the Mets Akil Morris up from single A Port St. Lucie. Getting loose in the Mets bullpen and Morris coming up yeah, for a ball. It's very unusual. 13 saves for Morris down in single A with 14 walks and 46 strikeouts. Kevin Pillar has been one of the few hitters for the Blue Jays who's figured out Jonathan East with a couple of hits. And a high fly ball to left field. Forget about this one. In this ballpark, that's gone. Three for three. Three nothing Blue Jays. Well, he should make a mistake on the basis the day before every day. Big night for Pilar. Redeemer. First pitch swinging fastball or was it a change. But he knew it was gone. This ballpark plays small smaller than it did when I played here tried. A bunt attempt by Goins. And it was interesting after last night's ball game he was very contrite talking to the media about how it was his fault and can't make that mistake. His base running gaff. Today rewarded for it. Fifth home run of the year. Ah! Talking about some of the games for the league. The Yankees lead the Marlins 2 0. Michael Pineda has a no hitter through six innings. Got hammered his last time out. He really hasn't pitched well since he had that no walk, 16 strikeout game. You never, as an offense, Ron, uh, you had a a great pitcher or one of the better pitchers in the league. You never liked to get them. There's Aaron Loop and Liam Hendricks up in the bullpen. You never liked to get those pitchers off a bad start. Mm. Felix Hernandez pitching against Madison Bumgarner. Felix didn't make it out of the first inning against the Houston Astros when he gave up eight earned runs. Well, this is when Jonathan has to stop the bleeding. It's been it's been his uh, Achilles heel. Uh, can get a little discombobulated, and it was good to see him last inning get out of that inning with a double play and only one run. But you can't you can't just blow up here. You got to keep the ball club in the ball game. Sorry, Keith. Ricky Bonus waving the towel. Universal sign that Keel Morris is ready. That's not a towel for surrender, folks. That's <laughs> pitcher's ready. See, he's going over what hitters that Morris might have to face if Jonathan can't get through this inning. A little overwhelming for a young pitcher out of A ball. A little too much information. Sensory overload, possibly. Just do what you do, kid. That's what I tell him. Fastball just misses by an ease. 2 0 on Jose Reyes. Good hit and run here. Not on 2 0. Too good a pitch to hit. Ground ball to Tejada. Tejada, Herrera, can they turn it on Jose nice. Reyes? They do. And two double plays and two successive innings gets Sneese out of some trouble, but he gives up the home run to Kevin Pilar. And the Blue Jays take a 3 0 lead. To the top of the eighth.
where you'll experience the action and fun of two amazing theme parks, plus stay on site at Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort. Just go to sny.tv slash Toyota and enter the Toyota Fan Flyaway sweepstakes for your chance to win. Oh, Ezekiel Carrera now playing left field for Kiss Chris Colabello and Liam Hendricks in the game. Steve Delabar, a heck of a job for John Gibbons Blue Jays. Well, Hendricks in the first game came in uh, in the ninth, 11th inning in that extra inning ball game to face Flor Gil Wilmer Flores. And Flores got that base hit off him to win the ball game. That first game of the series, that 4 3 victory. And it's the same Carrera out in left field that was playing in out in Flushing Bay on that double on single by Lucas. Liam Hendricks hard thrower 94 miles an hour there on that fastball for a ball. Well, Akil Morris was up before. He was going to try to get John Denise through the inning if he needed it. He has now sat down and Hansel Robles up for the Mets. False alarm. <laughs> Pours in a strike. Make the count two and one. Granderson on deck. Almost right back at us there, Keith. Yep. I'm going to let you and your goal take care of any foul balls back here. It's time for tonight's Verizon trivia question. Which player has hit the most home runs in the history of the Rogers Center? It's uh, a good question. I would not have the slightest idea. Nice. Nice hitting by Dilson Herrera as he lines a base hit to left field. Well, Herrera has been getting his knocks. What I've seen this year from opposed to last year, he's been a little bit under the ball, the high pitches, not getting on top of it like he did last year, but uh, still like the way he swings the, the lumber. And Granderson up, who can pull the Mets close with one swing of the bat. I think I have an idea of that trivia question. I think he uh, was a former Blue Jay that played for the Mets. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I would think so. Short lead by Herrera at first base. Good swing by Grandison, just a little late. Count evens. Again, the big shift played by the Blue Jays against Grandison. Reyes up the middle. Granderson swinging through that breaking ball from Hendricks. Waving through it. This was a wave. Completely fooled. It's one of those where you almost feel like the hitter is guessing fastball and instead gets the breaking ball. It's called a curveball in the dirt. Starts out as a strike and oh it's breaking and I don't want to swing. But when you slow down your swing it's too late. We've all been there. Done that. Again, same pitch and Granderson down on strikes. Well, heading to, heading to count, Ronnie, you don't have to throw a strike. Bounce a big hard curveball in the dirt and see if they go fishing. Some more pitchers should do that. Control out of the strike zone, one of the last things you learn as a pitcher. Juan Legar is one of the hottest Mets pitchers, one of the hottest Mets hitters. Up here in the eighth. Herrera off. Gets a big jump. The throw by Martin, and he's safe. Going to see. Second baseman, very interesting, waving his hand back and forth like, I don't know. It's pretty close. He got a terrific jump. Terrific Ron. jump of Martin. Great throw right on the bag, and he's late. Well, there it is. He's, look how quick acceleration. What's well, nice to see Herrera starting to use his speed. Garris has a chance now to drive him in. It's 
Second stolen base for Herrera. Well, Hendricks likes his breaking ball. Gets ahead with Garris. Duda waits on deck. Loop, of course, up in the bullpen, ready to go. He'll come in to face Duda. And good breaking ball hanging over in the middle, but it looks like it'll stay in play as Kevin Pillar, Pillar makes the play in right center. Herrera tags up. And now with two outs, the Mets have a runner on third. Well, here's the Buick road ahead tonight, of course. We're in Toronto and tomorrow, then three over the weekend in Atlanta, a day off on Monday, and then three more in Milwaukee till the Mets come home and face Cincinnati in a three game series. Well, John Gibbons, the Blue Jays manager, out to make a move. Well, Liam Hendricks gets a couple outs, and Aaron Loop into the game for the Blue Jays, who lead this game three to nothing. Aaron Loop into the game to face Lucas Duda for the Blue Jays. Just misses him with that fastball. Loop has appeared in 135 games in the last two seasons. Is their left handed specialist. It's only surrendered one run in his last 13 innings. You know, the crossfire watches from front foot, his striding foot. He steps towards first base and throws across his body. Had a clean inning, a clean 10th inning in the first game of that. Series in New York. Boss fire only works if you can throw strikes. He hasn't yet. High fly ball to right field. This one looks like though it's going to not carry and knock down. Bautista makes the catch for the third out. And Duda just misses hit one out of the ballpark. Mets still the trail. Three nothing.
relieve Jonathan Nees. This is his first assignment in the major league. Just imagine, Keith, what he's going through. I told you before, in Sports St. Lucie, 13 saves, 0-1 with a 1.69 ERA, 14 walks, 46 Ks from the Virgin Islands. And Brent Cecil and Tapera up in the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Comes in and throws a breaking ball. Nice to see. Can you imagine the first three hitters you face in your first big league relief role are going to be Donaldson, Bautista, and Encarnacion. How about being thrown to the Wolves? Had a nice year in A ball. Only the second Met in Met history from the British Virgin, uh, from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Mets had an, uh, one of their originals was from the Virgin Islands. Yeah, right? Joe Christopher. Joe Christopher, the outfielder. Yes. Was he the one that uh, Ralph asked? Uh, what do you call him? your wife? No, he goes, Mrs. Christopher. That was uh, Choo Choo Coleman, I believe. <laughs> now listen, you can't get me. On, start getting me on Mets trivia. Oh gosh, that's Gary. <laughs> There's a scoring summary, as you can see. Calabello with a score, RBI single, and the Pilar home run. Well, good for him. Throw that 3 1 fastball. With one of the best power hitters in the league this year up to the plate. Donaldson trying to hit it 500 feet. That's the fifth walk for Mets pitching. Jonathan Neese had four. John seven innings had 104 pitches. 64 of those were strikes. It's the one thing that I see in today's game is that these kids come up. As you see tomorrow's tomorrow's way go on SNY. Six o'clock starts. Uh, the Mets will have the final game of the four game series before they move off to Atlanta for a weekend three game series. Uh, but getting back to today's younger pitchers, they behind the count, they, they're throwing breaking ball. They're asking them to throw a breaking ball, Ron. And yeah, when you throw 94, you don't want to trick anybody. And it's your first time out. It's a little. That's asking a lot, I think. It's hard to throw a breaking ball for a strike when it's your first time. Yeah, it's so nervous. You got eight gloves out there. They might hit. They might find someone. They might swing and miss. Jack Leathersitch in the bullpen now. What you end up doing on that breaking pitch is just overthrowing it, and that's what Morris has done so far. Again, up in the strike zone. As they used to say when I played, if you can't get that over and it's your first time out there, go Powder City. Remember that phrase, Keith? Just go with the fastball. Yep. Powder River. Powder River. Yeah, not Powder City. There's a fastball right at you, Keith. Make the play. It's in oh. us. Oh, my oh goodness. My. Almost got... Oh, I forgot. You got the sling on. I got. I got You're the, on the DL. I got the. Like I got the bad wing. You okay? Almost, almost got our man behind us, our engineer behind us. I got the ball. Okay, all right, good. <laughs> all right. There it comes. Right to my right. Nice, lucky it didn't. And I, I got the ball, folks. Lucky you didn't take out your iPad, you'd be did lost. You, did you see it coming? Talking to the engineer for he's right behind me. He did not see it coming. I went right through it. Oh, just missed him. Two walks now by Kill Morris and Dan Worth, and the pitching coach will go out to speak to his young right hander. Not a good start. Well, it's not much to say if you're a pitching coach with a young guy. You try to make him smile, try to make him relax. 
just say, hey, listen, just do what you've been doing all year long down in Port St. Lucie. Doesn't mean any difference here. Just really? go right after these guys oh. and be aggressive. Could you imagine you're an A-ball and getting a call? You never saw A-ball, right? No, I never I saw did. it. You see A-ball and you get a call. You're getting called up. Your manager calls you. Like, you're going to double A? Like, you think it's a joke, you're right? You're going to the big leagues? Yeah, be kidding me. And by the way, bring your passport. You're going to be playing in Toronto. Well, that ball almost got my iPad. You would have been lost oh, without man. that iPad. Well, he's calling Darno back out. A little bit of nerves for the youngster. Probably forgot what what the count was. Not the count. What sign they were using. Exactly. That happens Precisely. sometimes. He's nervous. So nervous that uh, he's got himself uh, runners on first and second. Nobody out with two walks. Things aren't going well. Pitching coach just came out there. Encarnacion's got to be guessing it's going to be a fastball. And he was. Grounded to Tejada. To Herrera. And Duda off the bag at first base. The throw by Herrera takes Duda off the bag so they don't turn the double play for the youngster. Boy, it was set up. Well, Tejada with the good throw of Bautista Keith. Uh, took to Lucas off the line, and uh, Herrera knew we had to rush that. He had to hurry. Even though Encarnacion doesn't run well, he had to hurry that. It would have been two if the throw was there. Mets are going to play back in the middle for two and in at the corners. See, Justin Smoke is going to pinch run and come in to play first base for Encarnacion as Ezekiel Pereira gets his first at bat. Bunt to first base. Runner at third's going to score. No one covering first base. And a base hit for Pereira. That bunt to the right side caught everybody sleeping. Pereira who came in for defensive purposes for Chris Colabello caught the Mets napping. He's just looking to get the one run in. And for some reason, uh, no one but Morris wasn't there in time. Number one, pretty doggone good bunt. Ground ball up the middle, gets by Flores into the outfield. Here comes Smoke around to score. Five on the board now for the Blue Jays. As Martin and the Blue Jays are stirring the pot against the young Akil Morris. Well, it's a rude welcome and welcome to the youngster Morris. And this game has been blown open here in the eighth. Well, we were told all game that the AstroTurf is extremely slow here. I would say it's slow, not extremely slow, as Martin gets that hit up the middle. Ball for a strike. Yes, Carrera at third base. And Morton at first. Valencia wants time. He gets it from home plate umpire Sean Barber. It's a, you know, this is a tough spot for a young kid in A-ball. A youngster to be called up into the big leagues. Is there, if there's no one. Valencia with a drive to left field. And the nightmare continues for Morris. Three run home run. We get the score to eight to nothing, Blue Jays. What can you say, Keith? Uh, a youngster from A-ball, he's out there to face 
three of the finest right handers in the American League. And they get to him with this final shot. I mean, not final shot, but shot by Valencia to make it 8 nothing. Well, it's a tough spot. And really, a game that really wasn't out a, a blowout. The Mets were very much in the ball game. Mets have been winning games like this 3 nothing. And it's, well, certainly with one, the ninth inning. There's the replay of the home run. Like a change up. But my feeling is, are you putting in a young man in. And that's a fly ball. That's going to end it right there. Two outs, excuse me. Are you putting someone in uh, too rapid a, tur rap rap rapid a river or too deep yeah. water? Um, if there, I know there's a lot of injuries down in, in, in AAA. Is there, if there's no one in AAA, gosh, is there someone in AA? I mean, it's so unusual for a young kid, early 20s, from a ball experience to be called up to the big leagues. You, know, you remember though, Carlos Torres uh, was a guy that was not available. Terry Collins was trying to stay away from Alex Torres, so it was his turn. He was trying to get him a clean inning, meaning starting off an inning, but it hasn't helped. Well, you know, it's a cruel game. It can be a cruel game, but you know, there's always lessons learned from every every, every game you appear in. And uh, payback can be, you know what? Um, you feel for the young guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been there before when you're a rookie and you can't get any saliva, you can barely breathe, your heart's beating through your shirt, and you're trying to throw the ball over the plate. Sometimes, like you said, it can be almost overwhelming. And that's what has happened to Akia. And another walk. His third of the inning to go along with that home run. And Terry Collins, the manager, with the big sigh. He feels for the young man. He's going to have to come out and take him. So Keel Morris is done here in the bottom of the eighth. And Jack Leathersitch on the pitch for the Mets. 8 nothing, Blue Jays. Well, there's Akil Morris after giving up five runs. Well, oh, what a feeling that kid must be going through, right, Keith? Well, they'll remember this day. Jack Leathersitch in to pitch for the Mets. Ninth batter in the inning. 
Morris two thirds of an inning of three hits five runs earned. Three walks home run no punches. Tough day at the yard. Three straight balls here by Leather Sitch against Reyes. It's only the 13th home run the bullpen has allowed of this season the home run by Valencia given up by Morris. Geico Sports Night right after the post game. News from Giants minicap. Didn't realize Gary still isn't allowed back in Canada. That was supposed to be a secret, Chris. <laughs> Gary hasn't been allowed back up north here in years. <laughs> You're going to start something that's going to go viral. Ball not even close. The fourth walk this inning. Three by Morris and now one by. Leather said now it's official. The Blue Jays have batted around. When you are in this position, you don't know where to put your hands. You don't know where to put your glove, where to look. Sometimes you forget that you're even pitched. It's such a blur. Other sits not having much better success yet. Doesn't matter what anyone tells you, how many times they slap you on the back, stay with them, kid. Like you said, Keith, you'll remember this forever. But you know what? If you go on to have a great career, you can say, tell your grandkids, you know, my <laughs> first three hitters, I 15 years in the big leagues, you know, my first outing was just awful. <laughs> Let's hope for that. A lot of time taken there by Darno and Leathersitch. Donaldson steps out of the box. Well, it's amazing how quickly you can score runs. Here's the answer to the Trivia question we asked before. Verizon trivia, which players hit the most home runs in the history? I thought it was Carlos Delgado, and it was. 175. He had 99 extra base hits once as a Blue Jay. 99. You see that leather sitch, that pitch was called for in by Darno. Paul ended up away. Well, Semi handled Bautista tonight. But this Mets, this team, this game seemed like 15 minutes ago. The Mets were still in it. 15 minutes later, it's a route. And the third strikeout for Donaldson. All fastballs up in his eyes, but doesn't matter much now. Akeel Morris has a tough inning, and the Mets are losing 8 0 here at the end of eight.
Kings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com with the official daily fantasy partner of the New York Mets. Enter promo code NYM for free entry. Immediately after the game, of course, they'll have or try to have all the answers post game. Gary Apple and Nelson Figueroa doing the post game show for us tonight. John Mayberry Jr. at bat for the Mets pinch hitting. Ryan Tapera in for the Blue Jays went to Sam Houston University in Huntsville, Texas. And Ball up the middle, Goins with a nice play. Can he make the play oh. first base all night long? That's it's been Ryan Goins and his glove. That's a player out there. That's a glove. That's a play. Other side of the second base. Beautiful. Doesn't get any better than that. Look at the arm. Sweet. Kevin Pulowiecki now up for the Mets as the Mets are emptying their bench to get some Met bats for their guys on the bench. Well, Keith, you and I uh, received some tough news from the truck just recently that lost one of our good friends, Nelson Doubleday. Just passed away, or the announcement of Nelson just announced, and uh, he died yesterday. 81 years old, uh, one of the nicest men I've ever been around. I know you must agree. Well, Nelson, Met fans got to have a place in their heart for him. He was the principal owner of this ball club, and things started to turn around. He hired Frank uh, Cashin and bought the ball club when was it in '88? I'm, I'm sorry, 78 when they bought the ball club? I believe so. And, and um, they basically came out and did the right thing and said they would be rebuilding. And uh, Frank Cashin said that. And they started going through the farm system. And everybody knows that out there in Metland that what happened in the 80s was something very special. And Nelson was a love the players, was always around uh, uh, the, the, the cage when we were taking BP. That's right. Uh, talking with us, um, I considered him a great friend, and uh, he'll be missed. Uh, I just have fond feelings for him. It was not only Nelson, but his whole family used to always be around uh, the players in the ballpark, and he just uh, he had one of those smiles and laughs that was just so infectious. And any time you could be in his presence was always a good thing. Uh, yes, and he was also the one when there was a little bit of indecision about bringing Piazza here from Miami. Then Nelson said, uh, was the one that said, hey, go get him, let's pay him and go get him. And there started another era of fine Met baseball, the Piazza era. Ground ball up the middle. Goins, of course, makes the play. 4 4 3 unassisted. And that ends the ball game. Jonathan Neese pitched seven strong innings. He left trailing 3 0. The youngster, Keel Morris, came in and had a tough time giving up five runs. And John Gibbons, Blue Jays, who had won 11 in a row but lost their last two at City Field, start a new winning streak here at home where they played their best baseball. I think Ron uh, we made a mistake I Nelson passed away today um, and you know what can I say I just I mean, we're, we're all going to we're all going to go one of these days and this is really sad for uh, a sad day for Met fans because I, I just think of Nelson as the, as, as the owner that came in and when the Mets were horrific uh, after that Seaver trade in the mid 70s how bad they were I played against them with the Cardinals in the early 80s.